going to look at how we can use a thing called ray tracing diagrams to solve problems in optics involving things like lenses. So as I said, you can solve problems involving lenses by drawing scale diagrams that we call ray tracing diagrams. Now this process is a bit tedious, but it does allow you to involve some pretty harsh algebra. So there's two methods of solving problems of lenses. One is what we look at today. The other one is called the thin lens equation. Now, the thin lens equation, the algebra can be a bit brutal. So in some ways, this is probably an easy way to understand what's happening, even if the, uh, the process involved is a little bit tedious sometimes. Okay, so there are specific rules that you have to follow in order to be able to get these ray tracing diagrams to work. So we're gonna have a quick look now at the sort of standard things you have to go through every time you draw a ray tracing diagram for a lens. Right, so we start drawing our ray diagram with a simple dotted horizontal line, which we call our principal axis. And then somewhere in the middle of this dotted line, we're going to draw a second dotted line in the vertical direction. That will become our optical axis, and that's where we're going to sketch our lens. Now, the lens itself doesn't have to be super neatly drawn. It's just there to help your thinking out. The actual two-scale thing, the thing you have to measure accurately, are the rays that we're going to draw. Now, having drawn that lens, the next, side, the next step is then to label scale points along the, the principal axis. You can put as many scale points as you like along there, but you should always make sure that you put in the F and 2F points on either side of the lens. Now, in this case here, I've just put the letters F and 2F, but um, what you would try to do in a particular problem is you try to actually put them in as values. So if your F is 5, you'd put 5 and 10 on either side. And you might choose to have things in between like 2, 4, 6 and 8 as well if you wanted to. Okay, so having done that, you represent your object by drawing a scale arrow that points upwards. And it needs to have an arrowhead on the end to indicate direction. So for example here, that would indicate an object with a size of three units because it takes up three units on the diagram. Once you've done that, you need to draw two rays. The first one comes off the top of the arrowhead and passes through the center of the lens. Now it turns out that when a ray passes through the exact center of the lens, it's not refracted at all. It just passes straight through without being bent. So that's the first one you draw. And then your second one you draw is a ray that comes parallel with the principal axis and hits the optical axis at an angle of 90 degrees. Now it turns out that that ray will be refracted inwards so it passes through the focal point F. And then when you do that, the two rays will intersect somewhere. And that point at which those two rays intersect, that is where your image will be formed. So then you draw a second arrow with the arrowhead at that point where those two rays intersect. And then you have your scale diagram. Okay, so having seen what you have to do when drawing a ray tracing diagram, we're going to stop now and have a look at a few quick examples of the sorts of problems you might be asked in a test or an exam and how you can use ray tracing diagrams to solve those problems. Okay, so my first example, I'm trying to find the image distance if I'm using a convex lens with a focal length of eight centimeters and I'm viewing it to view an object that's 20 centimeters away from the lens. So we start as with all of these problems, by drawing in the principal axis of the lens as a horizontal dotted line. And then once I've done that, my next step is to draw in the optical axis as a vertical dot line in about the middle of the principal axis. Get you my lens, and then mark the axes. Now, I figured since the focal length was 8 centimeters, I'd go up in steps of 8. So I've got 8, 16, and 24 on both sides of the lens. Once I've finished doing that, then I need to draw in an arrow to represent my object. Now, we know that the object is 20 centimeters away from the lens, so I do it halfway between 16 and 24. It doesn't matter what the height of this, this object is. And I draw my two rays. The first one goes parallel to the principal axis, then passes through the focus. And then the second ray just goes straight through the center of the lens without being deflected at all. And where those two meet, that's where my image is formed. So in this case here, I've drawn a little arrow to represent that. That will be an inverted image because it's upside down. Now, in terms of what the, the image distance is, you can see it's just past the 12 mark. It's almost a little bit more than halfway between eight and 16. 
So if you were doing this to scale, you'd use a ruler. I didn't have a ruler, so I estimated it. I estimate it to be 13 centimeters. So DI is 13 centimeters. Okay, example two. A convex lens is used to produce an image of a candle that is 75 centimeters away from the lens. The resulting image can be seen on the other side of the lens at a distance of 1.5 meters. Given this, what will be the focal length of the lens? So as before, start off by drawing in your principal axis. Come on, Graham, a bit faster than that. This is the problem with doing something and then doing voiceovers later. It's a bit tedious sometimes. Okay, once you've done that, draw in your optical axis in the middle and sketch in your lens. Now, after that, the next step would be to mark the axes with F and 2F and all of that normally. In this case, we don't know what F is. That's what we're trying to find. So given the values I had here, I figured it would make sense to go up in steps of 0.25 from 0 to 1.5 on either side of the lens. So that's what I'm doing here. So usually you use F and 2F to help label your axis. If you don't have that, then you just have to make a sensible decision instead, which is what I've done here. Right, once I've done that, I'm going to draw an arrow to represent my object first. Now we know that that's 75 centimeters to the left of the lens, so it's at the 0.75 mark. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to draw another arrow to represent the image. Now, because we're passing this light through a convex lens, we're going to get an inverted image. And we don't know how big that inverted image is going to be. I've just kind of drawn a line there to get me started. But what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to draw the ray that passes through the center of the lens first. And when it gets to that 1.5 mark, that's going to be where my image forms. So now I can finish off that image arrow. And now that I know that, I know that the second ray I always draw, that has to meet that first ray at that point. So I draw the second ray. It goes parallel to the principal axis until it hits the lens. Now when it hits the lens, it's refracted, and then it meets that other ray at the point where the image is formed. Now once I've done that, the point where it crosses the principal axis must be my focal point, because remember that second ray always passes through the focal point of the lens. So we can see here, the focal point of the lens is 0 0.5 meters away from the lens. Now my last example, I have a lens with a focal length of 12 centimeters producing an image that appears 18 centimeters away from the lens. I want to work out the object distance for that image, and I want to work out what the magnification of the image will be. In other words, how big or small is it compared to the original object? So as always, start off by drawing in your principal axes, sorry, principal axis and your optical axis. Now this approach to solving ray tracing problems can be quite tedious. The alternative is to use algebra, use a thing called the Finn's lens equation. Um, but some of us I know don't like our algebra, so you may find, even if this is tedious, it's a more straightforward, intuitive approach to solving these kinds of problems rather than using some sort of abstract algebraic equation. We will look at this in a further video if you are interested in the algebra approach instead. Okay, so having drawn that, sketch in the lens and then mark your principal axis. Now, I decide to go up in units of six centimeters, so 0 0.06, 0 0.12, 0 0.18, and so forth. I figured if I did that, I had my f and 2f points at 0.12 and 0.24, as well as some fine detail in between as well. Now, because we're using a convex lens here, we're expecting to get a real inverted image on the other side of the lens, on the right-hand side. So I'm going to represent that in a second by an arrow that's pointing downwards to represent an inverted image. Now, I don't know the actual size of that image, so I'm just going to make an estimate. I'm going to make it two units, which is, according to our scale here, is six centimeters. And now I'm going to do some tricky stuff here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a ray that heads backwards through the focal point and then to the lens, because we know that one of the rays you always draw passes through the focal point. So it's passing through 12 centimeters. And then I'm going to draw my second ray, which I know passes through the center of the lens and isn't refracted at all, it just passes straight through. 
Then once I've done, done that, I go back to my first ray, the one that went through the focal point, and then I trace it backwards from the lens along a line that's parallel to the principal axis because we know that's how that, that light ray works. And where those two meet, that's going to be where my original object was. It's kind of the reverse of what we've done before with this ray tracing stuff. So now I can draw an object on that side to represent my object. And we can see that that object is at 36 centimeters away from the lens. So that's my object distance D0, 0 0.36 meters or 36 centimeters. Now to get the magnification, I need to know the heights of both objects. So the object arrow itself has a height of four units or 12 centimeters. And the image arrow has a height of two units or six centimeters. So you can basically see that if the image has a height of 6 and the object has a height of 12, then the image is half the size of the original object. So in other words, the magnification little m is 0 0.5, half size. Okay, now we're done. Okay, so that's it for a quick look at how to use ray tracing diagrams to solve problems. You will find some exercises to um, accompany, accompany these, this video on Moodle or on ComData. And you should find some solutions up there as well for those questions. Now, in the next video, we're going to move onwards and we're going to look at eyesight. So how do we see? And we're going to look at how we can use corrective lenses, glasses, basically, to fix your eyesight if you're short-sighted or long-sighted. So that's the next video. Okay, bye.